Lots of stuff to talk about in the world of racing. First of all, R. Andretti's Formula One talks breaking down. Is this a missed opportunity for F1 staring us in the face? Also, IndyCar testing. Lots of names and places you perhaps would not expect. We're going to talk about what's going to happen at Barber Motorsports Park on Monday. And finally, I got to go to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum and witness some history. The first car going into the museum since 1999. And we talked to Bobby Rahal about it. Let's get into it. And welcome back to the Land Castle. And we are finally kind of in my office as I envisioned it quite a while ago. But uh, things are finally coming together here and I couldn't be happier. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about today. And I want to start off with IndyCar testing, which will resume for the 2022 season starting on Monday at Barber Motorsports Park. Now, originally there were supposed to be six car driver combinations at that test, and the entry list was originally as such. Car 26, that's the Andretti Autosport car, which was driven last year by Colton Erta and may still be driven next year by Colton Erta. We don't know yet. But at least in this test, it's going to be driven by Indy Lights champion, Col- uh, not Colton Herta, uh, Kyle Kirkwood, the other guy with the uh, K sound in his name. 29 car for Andretti Autosport. Devlin DeFrancesco, we know that uh, he's been signed for that team forever. It's still, I don't think, uh, it's not official yet for whatever reason. The third Andretti, uh, Aero McLaren SP car. I'll learn to talk eventually. And this was a bit of a surprise, though. He certainly had some flirtations with IndyCar in the past. Nico Hulkenberg. Um, We'll have to see how this turns out. Uh, Certainly, that would be an interesting candidate for a third Aero McLaren SP car, even for a partial season schedule. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg joining up, and we'll talk about him a little bit more after uh, we talk about Ryan hunter Ray driving for Ed Carpenter Racing in the 20 car. And that's another thing that we're really going to have to talk about because obviously that has some implications. And finally, uh, are also Dale Coyne Racing, Dave Malukas. We know that he's been, uh, or he's got a ton of money. Um, the HMD Trucking Company, which is his father's company, backs him. But he had a fantastic season in Indy Lights as well. Um, so him testing for Dale Coyne is interesting because you might think that, hey, that team could be Takuma Sato and Dave Malukas going into next year. And finally, A.J. Foyt Racing was supposed to test uh, Logan Sargent, who is a highly touted American driver who really hasn't got a lot of American open-wheel racing under his belt. He's been chasing the Formula One dream, and he will continue to do that. And he will not test at Barber with Foyt because he was signed uh, to a driver development contract with Williams Racing, and it seems like all likelihood uh, that Logan Sargent will be headed to Formula 2 next year and not IndyCar. So it's unclear if Foyt will have a driver in the test on Monday or not. Uh, I would lean towards not. But I think the two most interesting drivers on this list are Nico Hulkenberg driving for Aero McLaren SP and Ryan hunter Ray driving for Ed Carpenter Racing. We'll talk about Hulkenberg first. Obviously, major international star. I, I feel like maybe two years ago, maybe even as far back to 2018, I know he'd looked at IndyCar, um, but seeing all these uh, Formula One drivers, Formula Two drivers, and and really I think in some ways I'm going to have to do my own or uh, a full-on video just talking about this issue, is that the Europeans right now are seeing the opportunity that IndyCar uh, presents to them, which is you could have as many cars as 30 maybe even more than 30 cars on the grid next year for any car. And if you've got, you know, a fourth of the budget it would take to go to Formula One, you can go to IndyCar and you can get a pretty decent ride. And again, the opportunities are there. 30 cars versus 20 in Formula One. And a lot of those seats, of course, in Formula One are already spoken for. So Nico Hulkenberg uh, taking this opportunity and uh, potentially being the Romain Grosjean of 2022 is quite exciting. Perhaps for some fans, uh, this next part, of course, is not very exciting, and that is Ryan hunter Ray um, is testing the 20 car for Ed Carpenter Racing. So this is what I... 
I've asked around. I don't want to necessarily say no, but there's definitely some rumblings that Ryan Hunter Ray uh, could be taking over the 20 car from Connor Daly next year for Ed Carpenter Racing. And um, I think in some ways, so I I don't think it's necessarily fair to Connor, um, though I will say this. Ryan Hunter Ray on Ed Carpenter Racing, that's a driver car combination that I think is very, very, very likely to not only compete but win the Indianapolis 500. And you think about Ed Carpenter and how good that team is at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Having a driver on the team that not only can compete for the win at Indianapolis, but has proven he can do it, um, I think that would be very tempting. I think it would be very tempting as well for the Air Force. Um, The Air Force has lots of stipulations in their contract. Number one, they need an American driver. And number two, it needs to be an American team. Obviously, being with an American team, Ed Carpenter Racing, that box is already checked. American driver? Well, Ryan hunter Ray kind of fits that mold. As, well, of course he fits that mold. But I think in a lot of ways as well, you know, he's got a beautiful family. He really is, as Lee Diffie says, Captain America. Uh, he kind of has a commanding superhero type presence. And not to say that Connor doesn't. Um, but I think that Ryan hunter Ray would fit the image the Air Force is looking for if indeed um, this came to pass and Ryan hunter Ray moved to Ed Carpenter Racing for next year. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but I think this is a very interesting sign um, that things, the winds of change could be blowing at Ed Carpenter Racing. So obviously I started the week talking about Andretti Autosport, Colton Herta, and Sauber F1. And it seems like things are slowing down a little bit in the talks department between the two sides. It was Jenna Fryer who announced, or uh, rather not announced, but uh, broke the story that uh, Colton Herta was looking to get an FP1 test this week. That ultimately did not happen. Now, ultimate, and Jenna actually replied to me on Twitter when I kind of asked the question, like, whoa, hang on a second. What could this be? Well, ultimately, it was the fact that they didn't have a car available or perhaps a seat available. Um, but other sources have been coming out recently, or, or I should say, you know, authoritative sources, I should say, not, not my personal sources, um, have been kind of saying, well, looks like things are slowing down a little bit. Um, from what I've asked around, you know, the answers that I've gotten have been like, well, F1 contracts are extremely complicated. And I say, well, no, duh, that makes total sense. Um, so is it time to hit the panic button right now on whether or not Andretti Autosport is actually going to take over Sauber or not? No. But I will say this. It would interest me quite a bit if Liberty Media, the American company which owns Formula One, can somehow n- manage to fumble the ball or allow the ball to be fumbled, that the namesake of the f- last American world champion a team that would bring an American driver who already has star power over to Formula One. If this somehow does not happen and Liberty Media does not Bernie Ecclestone, you know, kind of like, you know, sitting on the the bully pulpit, making it happen uh, behind the scenes, you know, I almost feel like it's a huge blunder for Formula One because I think in a lot of ways why there's so much hype behind Colton Herta and in a lot of ways, you know, you talk about Logan Sargent, He's a very highly touted driver. I have people screaming at me from behind the scenes all the time that I need to talk more about Logan Sargent. But ultimately, he doesn't have a lot of name recognition in his home country. So even if he makes it to Formula One, I would say he would be, unless he immediately goes out and starts winning, by the way, would be more like a Scott Speed rather than a Michael Andretti. I think that, at least from a star power perspective, Colton Herta is your best shot if you're Formula One to try to really, really hook the American market. So I think this whole thing is very interesting, and we certainly haven't seen the end of it yet. Um, But it doesn't seem like for sure we are going to see the end of it by this week. And again, in a lot of ways, I feel like it's a bit of a fumble um, at the end zone for Liberty Media uh, to not seal this deal for the United States Grand Prix, or at the very least, for whatever reason, Colton Herta was not able to participate in FP1. And finally, this was a cool story. I was at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum yesterday, and as you can see on the screen, 
Uh, Bobby Rahal was there, and he drove his 1986 winning Indianapolis 500 March 86C up to the front entrance of the museum. And the reason he did that is that the museum has acquired that car, and it will be in their permanent collection. I not only got to interview Bobby Rahal, but I also got to talk to the curator of the museum, Jason Van Sickle, uh, because I think both of those folks very passionate about the sport, very passionate about the history. And it's interesting to hear the story, uh, not only about, of course, the 1986 race, but what this car means to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, which is such a great resource and uh, asset to preserving auto racing history. I think you'll enjoy this. Jason Van Sickle with the museum, a big day here. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize how monumental this car is to the museum. Explain why this is the first car of its kind since 1999. Yeah, it's amazing. When you look at the museum, we're obviously collecting memorabilia and vehicles. 500 winners don't come up that often. So this is our first addition to our 500 winning collection since 1999 with the Jacques Villeneuve 1995 winner. So I know one thing that Bobby mentioned, and I know that you guys have mentioned to me quite a bit, is the mission of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum and that you guys have refocused over the last few months and years. Tell me a little bit about that process and maybe some ideas of where you might be taking it. Yeah, you know, the deaccession process, uh, we've looked at our collection, we looked at our mission and looked to see what didn't support that mission. Um, and it's been a three year long process with, with weeding the collection down to be more mission driven. Um, obviously some hard decisions were made in there and some easy. We don't really need five Model T's uh, part of the collection. So it's, it's, a, it's ebb and flow there. But you know the, the money that we receive from the deaccession goes back into the direct care of the collection. and really helps us uh, keep and continue to run these vehicles. Uh, obviously the cost of, of acquiring them and then the cost of keeping them running is, is in itself. And this is you know, putting ourselves in a good position to continue that. Now, I may or may not have to cut this, but can you tell me what the process was like to acquire this particular vehicle? Yeah. Um, so what I will say is donations are very key to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum. Us being a 501 not-for-profit, um, you know, these cars are very uh, expensive, their value. Uh, we are not like other entities that can go out and, and kind of throw our weight. Uh, obviously, the board and a collection committee were our desire was to to get this one. So there were some white knuckles and there were some, uh, some interesting, uh, uh, the moments leading up to it to acquire this, but I'm, I'm glad to have it in the collection. Bobby Rahal, 1986 winner of the Indianapolis 500, and you got to reunite with an old friend today. I know you've driven it a couple times before, but does it, does it ever get old driving your old winner here? Uh, no, <laughs> it's never, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, it, it really brings back a lot of memories and, uh, I wish I could spend more time in it, frankly, you know, uh, because I did have so many uh, great runs in this car and, uh, of course, winning the 500 for Jim Truman. And, uh, you know, it's just an amazing, uh, uh, amazing month, really, for, for, our, for our whole team. And so to see it and always to see it, uh, it always brings back thrills. And then I'm really pleased that it's here at the museum, and, uh, which is, I think, where it belongs. And so uh, uh, excited for people to see the car and I hope they enjoy it. Well, I know you're a big history buff of uh, just racing in general. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to the importance of what this museum does for, for automobile racing and preserving the history? Well, it, it's, a, it's fantastic, obviously, and especially now, um, you know, we have a new uh, curator and we have a, a, a new director of the museum uh, and um, really focusing on the, on the 500, the history of the 500. Uh, obviously the Brickyard 400 as well, but you know, given how many years has it been an Indy 500, you know, 100 and some odd years, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to really, uh, I think part of the reason this car is here is because there's a real effort to bring back to this site, to the museum, all the winning cars, all the winning 500 cars. And, you know, some have gone, some will never, you know, never find, but if we, if we can get as many as possible, that's good and that's happening right now. So. Uh, it's um, it's really it's for the fans for every, anybody who's interested in, in IndyCar racing, this will be the place to come. If we could go back, I know you mentioned the the importance of this win for your team owner Jim Truman, your good friend who was terminally ill at the time. But can you put 
uh, can we go back to that race? I know it was such a, a great duel between Kevin Kogan and you yeah, and yeah. Rick Mears. I mean, what was that like, and, and how did you win this race? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we qualified well. We qualified fourth that year. Um, led, I, don't know, I think, 60 or 70 laps, so, you know, a fair amount of the race. Uh, um, you know, it was a really interesting race. A lot of It was the fastest race in the end. It was the fastest 500 ever for a number of years. I still think it's in the top. I don't know, three or four maybe, uh, but it was just a very uh, smooth green, you know, all green race to 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 a large extent until right to the end when when Ari uh, helped me out a little bit and spun and barely crashed, but you know enough to to have a full course yellow and then of course uh, um, uh, you know the restart with a couple laps to go and I think the thing I'm most maybe the thing I'm most proud about is I had the fastest lap of the race on the last lap, so uh, the car was there. And uh, it was just a thrill to win it, obviously, and for Jim Truman, who you know would, par- would pass away about 10 days later. Um, you know, it was a very emotional day for all of us on the team, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of fans, a lot of, you know, uh, Jim was a popular guy. And, uh, uh, you know, I oftentimes think what would racing be today if he had stayed alive. I think it would have been different to the betterment, frankly. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was a great... Uh, a great day for us, uh, and then of course we went on to win five more races in the championship. So, 1986 was a pretty good year for the Ray Hall family. And final question from me: I know eventually you guys acquired the True Sports team uh, and, and has formed your current team. Looking ahead to the future, you've added a couple of new drivers, right. Jack Harvey and Christian Lundgaard. Could you explain the team's decision to go with those drivers? Because the driver market right now is stacked. Why those two? Well, Jack, you know, I've had the chance to see Jack uh, drive for the last several years, and he certainly has had the pace. Um, there have been some races where, he, frankly, he, you know, uh, he deserved better because, you know, there was at Portland a couple of years ago, um, you know, Ryan Hunter Ray um, just left his braking too late and, and hit him, took him out going into the chicane there, and I think Jack was running P2 or 3 at the time. Uh, uh, but over the course of the last two or three years, Obviously, he's shown his abilities, and uh, and he's young, which is nice. Uh, and then, of course, um, Christian came here, did one race for us, really kind of set the paddock buzzing because of his performance. And I th- and he's very young; he's 20 years old. So I think he's got a, a long future ahead. And so we're very excited. We think we have three, you know, great drivers, and we're going to be. Uh, I think you know the whole idea was for us to go into every race next year with. Uh, three good chances to win that race. So obviously an exciting day here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum and uh, we love working with these guys. We love uh, showing this stuff off because it's really exciting. Um, so I guess I'll send it back to the uh, the Land Castle and we'll keep talking about the things going on in racing. So yeah, that was a pretty cool opportunity. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm going to be at the autonomous uh, car race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, this weekend, I'm also going to be obviously checking in on the United States Grand Prix, watching that. Um, it's going to be a busy, uh, a busy week and a busy off season. It seems lots of stuff to talk about. We got that barber test coming up as well, which of course I will be covering. Um, at least at home, I won't be going to barber, um, but I will be planning on uh, attending tests hopefully later on this off season. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I will see you in the next